No Film School's coverage of NAB is brought to you by Black Magic Design, amazing solutions for film, post-production, and television. Big Stock, videos and images for everyone. Color Grading Central, professional color grading with Color Finale. Shutterstock, where ideas take shape. So then we have some other yes. new products here. I mean, we originally designed it as a very handheld indie kind of you know product, right? And we've got major artists doing major film clips and, and movies and TV shows all using the pocket camera. But what's interesting is we notice a lot of people are using it remotely. They're using it like, you know, in cars, you know, just in above a windscreen or, you know, um, of course in drones, it's being used in drones. And so we thought, well, why don't we design a camera that's better designed for that? Blackmagic Micro Cinema Camera. And what's really great about this, it's a nice little compact magnesium camera. Now it's got a bit more performance than the pocket camera because it does 60 frames a second. It's got a global shutter up to 30. So that's nice. And it's got a SD card on the side for recording RAW and ProRes. Well, it's really big about this. It's designed for remote use. So we've got um, the biggest thing, of course, you see there's a record light on the front and also the record button's on the front. So if this is bolted into a car and you've got the actor can push the record button, then you can confirm it's recording before you do your scene. Now, all the other cameras, of course, they're designed to be handheld. The controls are on the back and the tallies and status and everything's on the back, whereas this is on the front. But the big thing is it's got a this expansion connector. And this is like to let you just do crazy like expansion hack sort of stuff. And the great thing about that expansion connector is it's a really normal D you know, B2015 uh, connector. It's a really common connector, a $10 soldering iron. You can make your own cables. But it's got radio control aircraft remote control inputs. So you know these uh, little servos they have in radio control aircraft? Well, you, you know, you turn the button or flip the switch and they little they turn around. Right. Those those PWM connections that they're called, we connected those. We've got them on the side of the camera. There's four of them on there. And what that means is that if you wanted to use a radio receiver in a drone or a model aircraft, you can plug it into here and then you can sort of like adjust lens, iris or focus or and things like that or start stop the camera recording just using the same control. So it's a very cheap, very easy way of controlling the camera. So essentially you can control the camera completely remotely using this connector. Now in terms of firmware with this, how will that work? Um, well, what you've got, um, you mean like as far as how you customize it? Right. Yeah, well, there's a menu in here and if you plug into the HDMI, there's a full-size HDMI connector there. And if you plug into the little monitor in there, then you've got all the menus and displays on there. So when you use these buttons on the front, you can just bring up the menus like a normal camera. And there's also USB for plugging in, in that. And then you can map those those channels across to any of the camera functions. So you can actually decide what camera functions you want. And the other thing, there's actually an alternative way of controlling model aircraft servos, and that's called SBUS, and that's 18 channels, and that's only one connection. So there's also SBUS on there. Okay. So there's actually quite a lot of different camera functions. You can, um, depending what manufacturer right. of radio control gear you get, you can actually map a lot of the camera okay. functions across that. Right. And there's also a composite video out as well, so you can actually monitor all the overlays and everything on the actual video and the shot you've got uh, using a cheap video transmitter. I mean, there's HDMI, but there's right. a, even composite video. So you can see the, you know, there's a little histogram on it and you can see the uh, shot you've got, if it's focused, if it's, you know, if it's the iris. So you could have a little radio control set and a monitor using the same cheap stuff the hobbyists use. And you can adjust the iris and confirm that the, um, the pictures aren't, you know, overexposed or anything like that. Right. right. So it's really the functionality is built in already and then you can decide how you want to access that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's even a 5 volt on the pin there. So you can oh, wire, wow. up a, okay. wire up a mechanical switch to switch those analog inputs to between 5 volts and ground just with a click-click switch. So you can make a cable up. You could have a couple of these cameras wired up inside a car. You have them all wired together and just with a push-button switch. You push, push-button, and they'll start recording. Right. Then you could then take the result out in multicam and do the post-production and do the edit later. People have been using action cam type cameras for sort of high-end work, but the problem is they look like consumer content. What we really want to do is get a digital film camera in this small size right. and get it you know, recording raw with a 13 stops of dynamic range because it's got 13 stops of dynamic range. And that produces a wonderful picture, but you can put it in all those kind of action cam situations. So you've kind of got the best of both worlds. And you can also choose your own optics because it's a, you know, it's, it's a, I mean, I can't think how much smaller we can make the camera, right. you know, then you wouldn't be able to fit the lens mount. Right. So the lens mount's kind of dictated the size. So you've got the sensor size is similar to the pocket where it's like a yeah. Super 16 It's based size. on the same sensor size. It's, there's a bit higher performance sensor. Okay. So now this is, so it's going to do 1080 uh, raw up to? 1080p 60 maximum. Okay. Yeah. And it's, uh, this is 995 as well. It'll be available in July. Okay. Now there's a bit of a side interesting thing that we did, a sort of a side project. Because it's this wonderful little design, we thought, well, because we'll think about reality TV in some of these situations, and generally those guys use sort of more studio camera type cameras. So we thought, what happens if we take all the, the recording codecs and everything out of this camera, 
you know, could we build a really kick-ass studio camera? So we did do that, and we've got a, another alternative yeah. version, which is called the Micro Studio Camera. Now, it actually looks the same, but it's a whole different camera inside. This is actually an Ultra HD video sensor. So it's, a, it's the, the studio camera 4K that we built last year. Okay. It's shrunk down into the size. It's even got SDI control inputs. Now, the control connector on the side is different. It's got uh, um, uh, pan tilt zoom output, so you get to put it on a remote head and actually do all the control through the BNC SDI input and have pan tilt zoom and all that. But also it's got B4 lens control as well, so you can put ENG broadcast lenses on it with an adapter. Wow. So it's really a really very hardcore studio camera, um, ultra HD, and you know if you're doing reality TV, and you know the, the light on the front's now a tally light, so right. when it's on air you can actually see which camera's on air. Now you could use this as a camera head and pimp out and build a, you know, a studio camera. But the great thing is you can put those around a, a, a set. You could have it like a cooking show, and it could be one hidden behind a pot. And you're looking down at the wok as you're cooking <laughs> right. away. You know, so we thought it was a great form factor, and it's you know very tiny. So it, you know we managed to get a whole studio camera built into this, and it's whole It's actually a very different camera um, when you look at it. It looks the same. So you think, oh, that's a very similar camera, but in fact, inside it couldn't be any more different. Right. We just, we in some, essentially what we did is just use that magnesium front because it was a nice size and a great lens mount, very flexible. Right. So we thought, what happens if we just throw everything else away and then just replace it with a whole different product? So they look the same, but they're just a very different camera in a lot of ways. So now, price-wise, is are they going to be the same or similar? Well, this is 995. Right. Um, this is 1,295. Okay. So. And then both shipping around the same time? Yeah, they are, because in fact we're waiting for the metalwork uh, okay. tooling to be done before we can ship those. So it's actually the, uh, the uh, mechanical parts that are the time factor. And they can both take the same batteries? Yes, they do. In the case of the studio camera, it's more of a backup battery, because that's a wide-in camera. Right. Uh, the studio camera, of course, uh, the cin sorry, the cinema camera, is very much the, you know, because it's, it's running remotely, then you're really using that, that battery to power it. Now, is this, is this a new battery that you're using that's different from the Pocket, right? Yes, it is. It's a, what are the LPE6, or so it's the okay. Canon-compatible battery. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's... It's, it's more capacity. Right. So it's exactly like the Canon batteries you use in any other camera, but so... It is, yeah. It's exactly the same battery. Yeah, you can use that. That's great. So that's exciting. Yeah. Um, also, the other product we've got, because we built this studio camera, we really wanted to monitor for it. So we've got this nice little uh, Blackmagic Video Assist. Um, it's not got a battery on it, so it's not running. But this is a HD recorder, so it adds professional HD recording and monitoring to any camera. And you know, we thought that it would be nice to sort of bolt it on the studio camera and essentially build your own studio right. camera. But it also lets us plug just into the HDMI when we're doing onset menus, and you can see the menus. Um, but it's a ProRes recording, and it's DNX HD as well. So it's um, really nice, and it's only 495, so it's a nice little a compliment, but also lets you, you know, add it to, you know, even professional cameras. Like, right. you know, you could add it to, say, Ursa if you wanted to record RAW on Ursa, but you might use that to do ProRes because you're going to do the job in, in HD, so you just really use the ProRes files, but you, you might want to... Exactly, you're kind of preserving the RAW just in case you need to do Ultra HD, but you've got the normal HD files, so you do simultaneously, you know, HD and, Pro, you know, and, and RAW recording at the same time. So this is, this is, what are the max specs on this guy for, is this up to 1080 only? Yes, it's 1080p 60 maximum. Okay. Funny thing is it, it is actually 6G SDI in, which means we can use it as an Ultra HD monitor. Um, but it'll down convert and record to HD when you, when you do that. But it is actually an Ultra HD monitor, but it's mostly a HD product, but it just happens to have 6G SDI in, so, so really, we can use it as an Ultra HD. I mean, any, any 4K camera you guys have or anyone, you could take this and then send the 4K out and then down convert to, yeah. to get a really nice clean. Exactly, yeah, you can exactly that, yeah. So then this is uh, SDI, HDMI, in, out, and cross? Yes. Yes, that's exactly, yeah, you can do, you can convert in it as well. And it's got two batteries on the back, the same type of battery as these, okay. so you can hot plug the batteries if you want to keep it running. So you actually only need one, one to power it? And exactly, and it also, it'll run out that battery first before it uses, so it'll pick the battery that's got the least amount of power and run that down first, and then right. it'll switch over. Because you don't want the situation where you're kind of on and off a lot, and you kind of almost, both batteries get right. low. You kind of want to really hammer one and then get that out, recharge it, and then keep the other battery full. So it actually works out which batteries the least, you, you know, the most to use, the least amount of power in it, and it hits that battery first. Right, instead of power, them, them both needing to power at the same time, right. And it's got all wonderful on-screen displays, it's got histogram and audio meters and all the controls are on the front, so it's a bit of a different UI to the cameras, but it's, it's quite, uh, quite nice. So now this is a, this is a touchscreen monitor, as you said, and also, what is the resolution on this monitor? It's full HD resolution, very bright, really wide viewing angle. Okay. So. Uh, so this is 1920 by 1080, yeah, the screen? That's correct, yeah. yeah. Now, in terms of price and shipping on that, do you know price and shipping? Uh, it's about June or July, and it's also 495 Great. So. That's great.